You are here to know what is Mixpanel. But first we have a problem to solve. I have no idea who you are. I have no idea what you already know. I have no idea about any kind of background that you have. Do you have heard about Mixpanel just as a word? Have you just heard about Mixpanel but have no idea what it actually is? Or have you already tried out similar tools in the same space and just want to get even deeper and get more information. We have this broad range of your potential knowledge and I have to find a sweet spot how I can explain Mixpanel to you. I will definitely start pretty generic in this video, but then go more and more to the specifics. So if you already know a little bit about Mixpanel, so maybe you can doze off for the first, I don't know, two minutes, or you just skip ahead. And then, because later on, we will go more into more details, what you can actually do with Mixpanel and what kind of use cases you can solve with that. This is the disclaimer. So we will start pretty generic, but let's get started. Okay, so the big question, what is Mixpanel? Let's start with this. You have a digital store, e-commerce shop, online shop, or you have a digital product, an app, a software as a service, anything that in the end just based on software and can be accessed on the internet or via your mobile phone. The big question that you might have is what are your users doing? Because if we would have a regular store, so like a bookshop, we would just sit behind the counter and we would see people coming in, to which kind of bookshelves they go, which kind of categories are pretty popular at the moment, how many people come to the counter to basically pay something and so on. So we get a feeling for how actually our bookstore is performing. So after we close the door in the evening, we have a good idea if this was a good day or not. In a digital business, we have no idea because there's this black box, people come there and yeah, maybe we see some orders coming in in our order system, but not really what's happening before. We want to know which kind of features they, they use. So in the online store, where do they spend some time? Uh, in our application, which are the major use cases they are trying to solve with the application. And we also want to know are there specific things that are missing? Are there specific things they're actually searching for? So do people come to our product or our service with a specific thing in mind and they find it, which would be great, or they don't find it, which in the end, like, we should also know. Because in the end, we really want to see where people get stuck and so where we can help them to improve the customer experience. These are the challenges that we have when we work in digital products. And in the end, it comes down to the point do our users, visitors, whatever we want to call them, or customers already, get value from what we have created? Because the simple equation is, when someone gets value, they have the tendency to come back and buy it again, or do it again, or whatever. There's a clear indication when you provide value that you create a successful product. And if you create a successful product, you will most likely earn money unless you are a, a non-profit organization, but in the end, like, then it's helping you with your cause. So these two connected. First, we provide value, then we can ask people to pay for it, and this goes back and forth. So this is, this is the magic combination that you want to create in your digital product. We were talking about a lot of stuff, but we haven't talked about Mixpanel yet. We will get there. We have different teams working usually for our product. So on the one side, we have the marketing team. The marketing team's job is to make the world aware of what we have built there. And so that people know about it and they so might come around and check it out. The marketing team is interested in where are the users coming from because this is where they create their campaigns. How well do they convert? This is important to know for the marketing team. Convert means a user or a visitor becomes a customer at some point. So they create an account, they buy something, they create in a subscription. And so in the end, like with all the different kind of activity that marketing is doing, they want to have a feedback on which kind of activity works really well to turn users or visitors into customers. They also want to know from the different kind of people they sent to our product, which kind of segments work really well. And segment can be like, do they use a mobile phone? 
Do they come from a specific city? Do they come from a specific campaign? So they won't compare all these different kind of people or groups of people because this gives them feedback on how they can create their next initiative. And of course, in the end, like there's the big question, where should they invest the next budget? Because the marketing team wants to optimize that. The marketing team wants to expand it. So they maybe already have a good performance in their campaigns. Now they are looking for new opportunities. Where should they go next? Where can they get more people that are loving our product? And then we have the product team. So the product team has a slightly different job. The product team cares a lot about how people get value from the product because this is why they built the product in the first place. And so this is something they want to investigate. They want to investigate how quick can people get to the first value experience. Do these people come back? Do these people get value over time? Maybe not just one time, so but over a course of a year or do they get it one time or over a whole year? So because when they come back, they are willing to invest more money and they increase the customer lifetime value, which in the end then makes marketing happy because this is a signal for marketing that they can raise higher budget to acquire more users when we really have higher customer lifetime values. Something that the product team really wants to understand is like, how do our typical power users look like? Because they give us a really good indication what our product does and they can find ways to understand how they can get a new user into a power user much better when they have a good understanding on how power users actually look like and what they do. And the final interesting thing is what product definitely can do is like when they have a good understanding of a new user comes into an app and then how long it does take them to get a first value experience and then how likely it is that this value experience is repeated they can make really good prediction on revenue development. They can already see pretty early on by new users coming in how the revenue will develop over the next weeks because like, they have a good idea about, okay, when they perform here pretty well, there's a good probability that they will end up in a subscription. Again, we haven't talked about mixed panel yet, but I think now it's the time. So let's come back to the question, what is mixed panel? So Mixpanel in the end is a tool that can help you with all the different kind of questions that we were just asking over here to get answers to them. You will not get full answers, but you get ideas. You can get some insights to develop answers to these kind of questions here. And this is something where Mixpanel can help you. So let me show you how this works. Mixpanel is an event-based analytics tool. What does event-based analytics tool mean? So we track events or activities that users do within our website, online store, or within our app. So we make sure that we can track the essential interactions that these people do with our product to analyze like how they progress and do they get to a valuable experience? Do they end up buying something? Do they end up with a subscription? This is something that we have to collect to analyze it later. This is the foundational thing that we need. So it will look like this. This is the lexicon view that I have in a mixed panel project. And here I can see all the different kind of events that we are already tracking. So this is a classic whiteboard product, basically the same that you can see here. And we have different kind of interactions that we are tracking. So an account is created. Then I have created a new board. Then I have added an asset. This gives us a good idea how people are using our product and how in the end, because we also have subscription data, end up in a subscription. Which brings me to the next point. We want to enrich the user data as much as possible. So we, of course, we collect the behavioral data, but in the best case, we enrich it with other data. So for example, subscription data is a good example for us because subscription data is like the end result when people are really happy with our product that they end up in a subscription. And we want to see how this subscription is developing over time. So we have the possibility to enrich our data, for example, with warehouse data that we already have to get in this case, the subscription data in there that we are pulling from Stripe. And so we enrich our data set to understand, okay, when people are using the product in this way, they will end up most likely in a subscription, which is awesome. When a product team then starts to work with the data, they want to analyze which kind of interactions, which kind of flows or which kind of features 
I've been using a lot over time. We can do this by just looking in different kind of event performance. So we are looking at two events here. So the first one is like board viewed and the second one is asset added. So two essential things when people are starting out with our whiteboard product. So as you can see here, we have a lot of people looking at a board, viewing a board, that's great. The next thing that product is interested, they want to understand how people progress. And progressing is something that you can analyze really well with funnels. When we have a look at a funnel, and so I built just one. So what we can see here is we start with board created. This is a good starting point because like people can just use our product when a first board has been created. We start here. The next one would be like someone adds an asset. Like in our case, it could be like this kind of text box here. And so as we can see here, just 71% of people who have created a board have added at least one asset. So when we look to the next one, it's like board shared, which is a really good indicator that our product is creating some kind of value because like you wouldn't share your board if you're not really happy with it. So this is definitely a really good indicator that we did at least like a well enough job. And as we can see here, in total 35% get to the point that they share their board. So it's natural, we lose people on the way. This is something that happens all the time, but this understanding is essential for us to understand where do we lose them. We can already see here, we are already losing 30% to just add an asset, which we would think this is the most straightforward thing that you might think of. So we have a whiteboard open, so why not add something? This is something where we can now start to investigate because this helps us to understand, okay, maybe can we get here to 90%? Because what's pretty likely is when we get higher here, this one will go up here and then the total conversion rate will go up as well. And we have more people into a valuable experience. Getting there one time is fine but we want to get there all the time. So repeating value is something which is extremely important for a product team. And when we look into this, we will have a look into retention analysis. And so I created a pretty simple retention analysis. We start out with people who have created a board. And then we look, how often do they create other boards over time? And so because this can give us a really good indication that people understand the value of our product and come back and create new things and create new things. Yes, there are these edge cases who create maybe one or two boards and they are super happy with it because they do everything there. But the normal experience would like that people create more things. And as we can see here, yeah, we are quite good maybe in activating people to create boards, but we can definitely do better to make them stick. Because as you can see here, we have roughly about two 0.5% of people who come back over time and create more boards. There's definitely a big room for improvement. And here we can see how this performs over different kind of weeks. And here we can see if we are basically making progress by improving things. And as you can see here, this looks at least a little bit promising, like with new features that we might have deployed, that we are getting better and getting people coming back and creating more boards to work with our product. So for marketing, they have different kind of use cases. For them, for example, they want to understand where are the different marketing sources come from. So they would might go in and this is a different data set. So for example, like they have a member created event and then they have a breakdown where they can look into the marketing sources. So this is a data set where we ask people how they have learned about our product, which gives us an indication about which kind of marketing channel brought this user in there. And now we can analyze this over time. We can see like how the different kind of marketing channels are performing and bringing users to our platform. And this is one part how they can do it. They could also just go back into the funnel and then create a breakdown here and check the funnel for the different kind of marketing sources. This is extremely valuable. If you have an idea about, let's say, you have your five major campaigns that you're running at the moment and you just compare the funnel performance for these five campaigns, you might see that some campaigns are actually overperforming than the 70.9% here, so they maybe are at 80%. This is a clear indication to marketing that this is a campaign that brings people to our product that are more likely to get a valuable experience because like marketing has to find the right people. So if they get the wrong people in there, of course, these numbers 
are not looking good and it's super hard to solve this from a product perspective. So marketing and product always have to work hand in hand and this is like why it's so essential that you have now the possibility in Mixpanel to work both use cases in this tool. And the final thing which is really interesting for marketing is they want to create new audiences because let's go back. We have the funnel here. So we identify, okay, look, we have this gap of 30%. We saw that specific kind of campaigns are performing a little bit better. But what if we can run specific communication to find out what is happening with these 30%? And so what I can do is I can go in here and I can create a cohort and so cohort means it's like I create a group of people that I can investigate and watch over time. So I can go in here and can take my cohort and can sync it back, for example, into Facebook ads. I can sync it back into Google ads or I can sync it back into, into my mail or I can sync it back into my mail program or I can sync it back into my mail tool. This creates powerful use cases for the marketing team to take a specific cohort of people where we see, okay, we can improve their customer experience in some way. And we help them by adding specific kind of communication to understand where they got stuck, to help them out, to do the next step. And so this makes it really powerful for marketing. And again, the powerful thing about the question, what is Mixpanel? In the end, it's a tool that helps marketing and product teams to build better customer experience. And I hope after seeing all this gives you at least a good understanding what Mixpanel is and what you can do with it. But as you have seen, it was a lot of scratching on the surface. So in the end, it's a tool that can help you to understand customer experience on different kind of levels. And then you can apply these insights to improve the customer experience and then measure over time if customer experience is getting better. I hope this first introduction helps you. If you have any kind of further questions about what Mixpanel is or other kind of questions about the product or marketing analytics space, please let me know in the comments. If not, make sure that you subscribe and like the video so you can watch similar videos in the future. See you in the next one.